Well, 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 well. I think I have found another one of my favorite books of 2022. And it is Neruda on the Park by, whoops, I didn't even get her name. I'm sorry, Clavis Natera. Now, I am putting up, obviously, the screenshot. I didn't even have my iPad in my hand. I just wanted to look at this camera and say, I loved this book. Guess what? It's a debut novel. I can't believe it. As a matter of fact, I, I may even buy this and put this on my shelf, even though I've already read it, because that's how much I love this book. Now, I love culture and I love learning about other cultures, okay? African American, Caucasian, Jewish, uh, Italian, you know, whatever. Well, this is about a Dominican family, okay? It's about a Dominican family that, and they are facing gentrification of their mostly Dominican neighborhood, okay? Now, the Guerreros are three, okay? You have the daughter, Luz, the mother, Eusebia, and the father, Vladimir. Okay, those are your principal characters, but your two primary protagonists in this book are Eusebia and Luz. Okay, Luz being more dominant in this book than Eusebia, who is her mother. Okay, now Eusebia is fighting the gentrification that's going on, and she comes up with schemes and plans to, to make this thing fail. What is what's let's but let's talk about Luz, our main protagonist. Okay, she's an attorney who is trying to become an associate partner, and she thinks that the announcement is coming any day. Well, she doesn't get the promotion. In fact, she gets fired. Okay, so this is a wake up moment for a spoiled girl who still lives with her parents. Most of her money goes into shopping. In fact, there's a scene in the book when she gets home after being fired and she's trying to figure out how to tell her parents. And she walks into her room and by her closet, she can't even get into her closet because there's box after box of stuff that she bought. She's like uh, uh, an, an incessant shopper, shoes and whatever, whatever have you. That's how she lived and she lived just fine. Okay, then we have Vladimir. Um, I know that he's a cop, but he he might even be in a a little bit more complicated job because uh, he's working on catching people who are causing immigrants to lose their lives. So I didn't fully understand um, what Vladimir's job was, but that's who Vladimir is now. Vladimir and Luz had a plan, and this plan worked perfectly because Luz had all this money, right, with this lucrative job as a lawyer. So her and her father are secretly building a retirement home for her mother back in the Dominican Republic. Now Luz has to worry and be concerned about what could happen. I hate the camera view. I'll try to adjust it. Um, Luz has to worry about what, how her role in helping her father prepare this retirement home for her mother or for both of them, but, you know, as a gift to their, her mother, if she doesn't have a job. Then there is the fact that something happens to Eusebia at some point in this book. And based on what happens to her, it shapes those schemes and plans she has on ruining the construction plans and the any other plans to to stop all of these luxury condos that are going up. Now, of course, everybody that's a resident there gets offered this all this money. You know, take this check, and you know we're gonna tear your house down. But she wants more than that. And like I said, um, this bougie lifestyle that uh, Luz uh, was leading. Now we get to see her realize that you know everybody puts their pants on one leg at a time and now how is Luz going to function now there's a little bit of a touch on this book that that really got to me is there's uh somebody that Luz was working with at the law firm and um alcoholism comes in it doesn't involve uh Luz's family Eusebio or Vladimir or Luz no but there's a slight trigger warning to that, but I I wanted to mention that. 
And the reason I wanted to mention that is because dreams, okay? If Luz became a partner at her law firm, okay? The sky's the limit. But if the sky's the limit and she became a partner, where could she go from there? So I like the idea, at least that what I got out of this book, is that we watch Luz's dreams in the beginning and we watch them morph and we watch them change and we see why there was a change. Now, I hope I didn't give you any spoilers. I don't think I did because um, ambition is mentioned in the blurb and that's why I talk about her plans, you know, how, how there was changes. So we see it's a book about ambition, it's a book about friendship, and it's a book about family, and it's a book about starting over. And it's a debut novel. It's a debut. I can't believe it. This talent, this author, Clavis Natera, is very, very talented. I loved, loved, loved this book. Now, I will tell you that whenever I have, because this book came out in May, I believe. Uh, yes, May 24th. Whenever it, it takes me a while to get to an arc, because my queue is magnanimous on Neck Alley, I will always check my library. And if I can get it on at, from my library, then I will listen to it as an audio book since I hadn't gotten to it as a digital galley well guess what there were three narrators okay um and that made the book even better so we're just gonna zip over to audible.com because that's the quickest way that i can tell you um the narrators okay it was narrated by amani russell annette amelia Oliveira, and alma cuervo three narrators I'm telling you, they did a fabulous, fabulous, fabulous job. If you can get this from Audible, your library, Scribd, you know, what have you, I say get the audio version of this book. I think it was fabulous. I would have read it as a digital arc if I couldn't get it as an audio. That would have not have impeded me, my desire to read it. But when you have a book that's written really well, and then you get to listen to it as an audiobook that's narrated. And then you got three narrators. And they are Dominican. And like one ironic thing is um, as a child of Dominican parents, Luz barely speaks Spanish, can't read it, and can't write it. Because she had become completely Americanized through her education, through her work. And her parents held on to their culture. And I loved watching that flow through the book. And with these three narrators who have that Hispanic culture, mwah, perfect, just absolutely perfect. So that is the, uh, this review for you, Neruda on the Park by um, Clavis Natera. And can I just say one other thing really quickly? The our characters were erudites like me. I love it. I love when a character is a reader. I just love it. So I just had to throw that in. All right. Love you. Thank you for watching. Bye.